you know, I just came from listening or watching Paris Milan's video where she covered the black man who um, asked black women if they feel protected by black men. I think the question is a wrong question. I think the responses are off base. Um, and let's go through that. Let's go through the law of unintended consequences, right? So first, um, black women, you don't owe black men anything. You don't owe black men kindness. You do not owe black men smiling in public. You do not owe black men being respectful. You do not owe black men sex. You do not owe black men your space. You do not owe black men protesting after one of them is harassed or murdered by the state, by the police, right? Or by some random um, vigilante. It is a good thing when you do it. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Z would like if you do it for me, if, if something happens to me, but you do not owe me that. You do not owe black men your telephone number. You do not owe black men your social media information. You do not owe black men femini femininity. Excuse me. You do not owe black men your time. You do not owe black men your energy. But likewise, black men do not owe you protection. Black men do not owe you provision. Black men do not owe you their presence to stem or keep away um, what goes bump in the night. All the dangers that's, that are out there in the world. world. Black men do not owe you that. We, we live in a society, right, where we're, we're no longer running from saber-toothed tigers. We're no longer hunting woolly mammoths, right? We have a very fantastical view of what protection is. And in a nation, right, the most powerful nation on the planet with more aircraft carriers than every other nation combined, with a couple dozen submarines, most of which are nuclear um, powered, excuse me, maybe not even nuclear powered, but definitely nuclear armed. That is the nation you live in, right? You live in a, in a militarized police state with at least something around the 18,000 police agencies and nearly 700,000 police. Ladies, you can own your own gun. You can take um, mixed martial arts classes to teach yourself how to fight or to be taught how to fight. So when you say protection, understand you don't live in the world where these things are, we're not 10,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, 150,000 years ago. It's a very fantastical view, right? Also, and I'm not putting a negative connotation to this. I'm not railing against this. But, you know, second wave feminism changed a lot of what we think about the role of male and female, the role of the role, excuse me, of men and women. And a lot of people are having a difficult time coming to terms with that men and women. But for sake of this conversation, you don't have to play those gender roles any anymore, women. That also means that men do not have to play those gender roles either. This is one of the unintended consequences that came with second wave feminism. When you freed women from having to play particular gender roles, you also freed men from having to play particular gender roles. That was part of the fine print on the bottom of the receipt that many people do not read. We also have to touch on the pillars that hold up a society, right? That That is why I advocate for people to take their civics classes seriously, your political science classes, your philosophy classes, your sociology and, 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 and um, psychology classes, so that we can know the pillars that hold up a society, hold up a civilization, right? Hold up a community. When you start to knock down pillars, you cannot be surprised when the, when the roof starts to cave in. We can't be surprised by that. Right? These, these are things that we do not think about. But we definitely feel them when things aren't working in our favor. 
Men do not owe women. That's across the board. All the examples that these women were speaking on on the video with Paris Milan, their personal experiences, which I cannot discount, their lived experiences. But you're not owed that by men. Women, you do not owe men to smile at them in public, even when they attempt to engage you. You can continue to walk by. But likewise, men do not owe you to hold the door open for you. They do not owe you to say good morning. They do not owe you if they see, see you being harassed to stop that harassment, to let their presence be known so the other person can stop harassing you. They do not even owe you to stop a, a, a violent act against you. Are these the ugly? These are the ugly realities of living in a modern era, modern times. I'm an advocate of rewriting the social contract because obviously the old one has been ripped to shreds. It's been obliterated. So we need a new social contract so that people can understand what's expected of them. Because right now in this transition period that we're living through, people want to mix and match match what parts of traditionalism they want to engage in and what part of modernity they want to enjoy at the expense of the other person or the other group. And this is why many people are having a difficult time dealing with living in the 21st century, living in the modern era. None of these things that were previously taken for granted, none of these things should be expected anymore. And Paris Milan and her subscribers and followers, as we can see with that video, are having a difficult time realizing men do not owe women this. And this is not just a black man statement. No, men do not owe women this. And other men are showing their women this also, although many of you do not know that because you do not know these non-black men. You do not have conversations with these non-black men. For example, when white men say women, they mean white women. When they say Western women, they're pretty much talking about white women. You do not know this. And this is not comparing black men to white men. This is, however, putting things in the context. The, con the statement of, well, these non-black men are not bashing their women. That's not true also, once again. Asian men are writing in on university walls in California the Asian women are the is the white man's whore. Y'all don't y'all do not know what's happening in these other communities, but you're comparing black men to men you don't even know. You do not even have deep philo philosophical, political, and social conversations with. Right? It's very important that we understand what society you're living in. In the modern era, once again, no one owes anyone anything. And it's ugly, right? All the things that I'm saying, these things are not good for social cohesion, for social uplift, to keep your society from falling into a weird social dystopia. I'm not advocating for us not to have each other's back. But... No one owes anyone this. This is not anyone's responsibility. Men do not owe women feeling safe. Men do not owe women protection. And once again, th this is very important that I stress also. No group of man, no race of man is so omnipotent that the women of their group are under some type of bulletproof blanket of protection. This is Once again, this is a very fantastical view of protection that the black community has, that black women in particular have. No group of men is so powerful, so wealthy, so influential that the women of their group would not be harassed, would not be physically insulted, would not be sexually assaulted by other men from other groups. You can ask white women. White men, at this moment in time, are the most powerful, influential, wealthy men on the face of the earth. And yet, white women still end up in very awkward and weird, weird situations, and sometimes even killed by non-white men. 
we have to get out of this cartoonish view of protection and provision in the black community. In comparing the black black men and black women to non-black people who we do not know and we do not have conversations with and we're not living with. Putting things in the context, yes. But comparing, especially when you don't know these people, it's not a good look. There were, there were women that talked about their personal experiences and we can't discount that. But once again, you, you are not owed protection and you, you are not owed the feeling of safety from any man. When people in America advocate for individuality, you have to understand what that comes with. There's, once again, unintended consequences that come from that. People can see the worst thing happening to you and they owe you nothing. People can see you being physically harassed. They owe you nothing. They don't even owe you lifting up their phone and recording it. That's men and women. So the man that asked the question, I understand it. That question was a very loaded question. It, 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 quite frankly, women are not owed protection. And then Paris Milan, um, taking all of those clips of, of women saying, no, they do not feel black women, I'm sorry, taking all those clips of black women saying they do not feel protected by, by black men. That's understandable, but you're not owed that. And it's very interesting that for, for the, the women that did record themselves saying, you know what, I do feel protected by my boyfriend or by my husband, but black men writ large, no. Well, black men writ large do not owe you that. Men writ large do not owe you that. Ladies, once again, if you do not owe men your femininity, smiling in public, being kind, right? Maybe saying one or two words to random men while you walk past them. Maybe not being too friendly where you might feel unsafe. If you do not owe men that, they do not owe you their presence or making you feel protected and, and secure in their presence. They do not owe you that. These are, the type of, these are the type of things, once again, that taking a class in sociology or taking a class in political science and understanding how certain things fit in, this is the importance of that. This is how you understand socially how one plus one equals two. Two plus th three equals five. Because we're knocking down pillars and then not replacing them with anything once again and then wondering why the roof is caving in. And I'll, I'll end with that. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. I definitely want to know what the ladies think. You brothers and, and men in general that come in here, even if you're not a black man, let me know what you think. But women, I definitely want to know for, hear from you. How do you expect to, to shred your part of the social contract between men and women, but then expect men to still uphold their end. And yes, I understand the man-female dynamic has been going back for ages, for generations, but it's not owed to you, especially, especially post-1975, those things are gone. And until we sit down and have a new contract written and both parties for the most part agree, and both parties leave the table annoyed about the things they didn't get because that's how contracting works. Until we have that conversation as a larger um, planet, um, Western civilization, uh, America in particular, especially bl the black community in America. Until we have that conversation, you can't expect anything. All of the things you took for granted, you need to throw those out the window. And I'll end right there. I'll pause right there. Y'all let me know what y'all think.